Come of the rainbow name of our faith. Hallelujah. Because of COVID, I mean COVID, the impact I think has, uh, has, has affected every aspect of life. Hallelujah. So we celebrate Christmas and at the same time we regulate our faith and at the same time we will prepare for the end of the year service and we also look forward to the year 2021. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, our sermon uh, will be taken from where our sister read the book of Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. It's a very beautiful passage. It talks about how the wise men saw the star and how they allowed themselves to be led by the star to where Christ was and they worshiped the Lord. So we entitled the sermon, Wise Men Making Jesus Christ and Worship Him. Wise men. Of wise people, they visit Jesus, they worship him. So in the eyes of God, when we say someone is wise, uh, these are people who make wise decisions when it comes to the things of God. That's a wise person. In the eyes of the world, a wise person is that man or that woman who makes the wise decisions when it comes to the things of God. So here the Bible refers to these men as wise men. The unwise or the opposite of wise, which is who are those who are very wrong when it comes to the things of God. So example, we have the parable of the rich who the book of Luke 12, 16 to 21, who said to himself that I think I have acquired work. Let me relax and enjoy my life. And the, the Bible Christ referred to him as a fool that that very night the Almighty God will demand your life. So a wise person, uh, biblically, is that man and that woman who makes the right decision when it comes to the things of God. And these men, uh, in our own passage today, we see that the Bible refers to them being wise men. Hallelujah. Because they were wise men. They saw the star of Jesus and they looked at Jesus. They went to Christ and they said, I will pray. We saw your star that you will be born. You have come to this world to save mankind. Uh, we don't know the conversation that took place. All we are told uh, is simply that they presented gifts to our Lord. Hallelujah. So that's a wise person. Lord, on the other hand, was searching for Jesus, but to kill him. And so, politically, Herod was not a wise man. And I think this is obvious, right? It was obvious that Herod was not a wise man. But whereas people from the east, maybe somewhere from Iran or Iraq, they traveled all the way to Jerusalem, Bethlehem, to look for Christ and to worship him, Herod, who was the king there, was searching for Christ to kill him. So when you compare these two people, you realize that Herod wasn't wise by the men who traveled all the way to Jerusalem were wise men. And so the Bible calls them the three wise men They came to worship God. And so as we said, when we do what is right in the eyes of God, we are respected, we are honored, and in fact, we do well in life and we get the wisdom to believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. Hallelujah. When we do what is right in the eyes of God, we are honored, we are respected, and then God gives us the wisdom to receive Christ Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. And the denial of God or disobedience to God is often accompanied by a wicked lifestyle. And so I think we can take this prayer home that the Lord should help us to be wise people. Hallelujah. That we, when it comes to the things of God, we, we will get it right. And as we get it right in the eyes of God, we are honored, we are respected, and we do well in life. God also gives us the wisdom that we need to believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. So, so I, I think at Sunday school, those, those of you who have been to Sunday school before, 
uh, you know, we will, I mean, the teachers will teach you about the three wise men. So they were called wise. But they got it right when they saw the star of Christ. They said, let's go and visit the Lord. And they worship the Lord. Jesus also tells us in the parable of the wise virgins and the foolish virgins in the book of Matthew 25, 1 to 13. The wise virgins took extra oil so that they could keep wait, waiting in case the bridegroom was delayed. On the other hand, the foolish virgins did not make the right decision to take extra oil. But the wise ones were allowed into the banquet, but the foolish ones were not. So so, so in it, where you see the word wise, wisdom, in the Bible, it refers to that man, that woman, who guessed it right when it comes to the things of God. So, I mean, because we want to focus on Christ, we will not be talking about the parable of the ten virgins. When you go home, you can read uh, the uh, story uh, in the book of Matthew 25, 1 to 13. Christ used the same word. The wise, the foolish virgins. They get it right, so they are honored, respected. And God gives them grace to come to Christ, to receive salvation. But the foolish ones, they don't. So the, the title is very simple. Wise men visit Jesus Christ. They worship him. But I think last year, uh, we titled this sermon, we saw his star and we have come to worship. That was the last day. It is the same passage. So the focus was that we saw his star and we have come to worship. We heard the gospel about Christ and we have come. And this year, the Lord has given us this, this title that wise men, they visited Christ and they worshiped him. They got it right. And they heard about the Messiah, where he was. So why Christians carefully obey the Lord? Hallelujah. I mean, the same uh, uh, word is used in the book of Matthew 7, 24 to 27. And I think you can read this text. The book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Again, Christ uh, used this same word wise. He says, the wise and foolish builders. Matthew 7 24 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man. Have they said that? Wise man. When we were growing up, the preachers would tell us to underline that word. But these days, I don't know if you still do. If not, you can highlight that word if you are using any device. So he put, uh, and puts them into practice like a wise man who built his house on the rock. When the rain came down, the stream rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice like a foolish man who built his house on the sun. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So to us, to us scripture, a wise person, wise man, wise woman, it always refers to that person who gets this right when it comes to God. And the man died. Those three, some people say they were kings, some people say they were theologians, some people say they were astronauts, they were, but they got it right. They went to Jesus, and we are all celebrating Christmas, which we focus on the birth of Christ. So here, Christ tells us about the wisdom and foolish uh, builders. That the wise ones are those who put the word of God into practice in their marriage, in their health, in their finance, in their spirituality, faith, at the workplace. They put the word of God into practice. So if there's a problem, 
they survive because the word of God endures forever. The word of God is God himself. It's God incarnate. John 1.1 1, 1. So those who practice the word of God, they survive because the word of God is life. Christ says, the foolish one will not and when the storms of life come, their life collapse with a great crash. Now there's a difference between a believer and unbeliever. Let's listen to this carefully. Let me just comment on this. That sometimes unbelievers think that you, the believer, going to church and praying is a waste of time, right? Sometimes you really laugh at that oh, you've been to church all this while. Well, what do you have? And why is your God allowing you to go through all this? But church, the difference is clear. You will go through the many things you will survive. But you will survive. And the unbeliever, one thing, one, one problem, will stay with that man or woman till death. Go and check. Ask your friends. You and I will go through. I will survive. We will survive. Not just survive, go we'll come out and be fresh. But the unbeliever, that thing will stay with him or her till death. And I call this the midlife crisis event that comes upon every man and every woman on earth. In your lifetime, maybe in your, in, your, in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, one thing will happen to you. But if you're a believer, you're able to overcome it. And the unbelievers, that thing stays with them till death. That's the difference. So when they make that comparison, sometimes I laugh and I say, you still don't get it, hallelujah. That the believer we will go through all kinds of things and we will shake ourselves and still praise the Lord. But the unbeliever, one tragedy, that's it. It stays with him or her. So that I think I promised the church, the church to teach on this, the midlife crisis, and how to overcome and live. Many people, the crisis stays with them till then. So Christ is telling us the difference. And the man, the woman, who has put his faith in the Lord and obeys the Lord. Yes, their storms will come. The building will be shaking. But they will survive. That is our hope. And that is the life Christ has given us. Believer in Christ Jesus will overcome trials and tragedies until he or she is called home. He will ten times, hundred times, they will come left, right, center, from the north, south, I survive. And continue. And so those who don't really serve God, those who don't worship God, they, they miss a lot. They don't live the life that God has today for them. But the unbeliever one is one crisis will destroy the unbeliever. And the unbeliever will sometimes will live with that crisis till that. The book of Proverbs 24, 16 tells us this, which I think we can read. The book of Proverbs 16, 24. It says that although the righteous fall seven times, they shall rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Amen. Amen. So the wise, that those who Follow the Lord and obey the Lord. It may, it may not be popular. But the Bible says that they are honored and respected and they receive special grace. And we call the three men who saw the star of our Lord and went and, and worshiped him. We call them the wise men. And, and this is the definition God gives. In the, in, the, in the Old Testament, when Moses was speaking to God's people, he said in the book of Deuteronomy 4 6, Now if you obey God, this will tell the nations that you are a wise and understanding people. In other words, if you obey God as Israelites, you know, he gave them the last sermon before he left them for Joshua to take them to the promised land. And then chapter 4, verse 6, that was what he told them. If you obey the Lord your God, 
all the other nations will see your obedience and they will say that you guys are wise and understanding people. And, 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 and this is what the wise men demonstrated. They saw the star of Jesus. They went, they visited him, and they worshiped the Lord. Psalm 14 verse 1 says that a fool says in his heart, there is no God, right? That's what Psalm 14 verse 1 says. The same thing in Psalm 51 verse 1. It says, a full stage in his heart, there is no. So it means that that person is unwise. But it's, it's different from being, you know, you, you can't be intelligent. Are we here? You can't be intelligent, but you may not be wise. Biblically. So most atheists are very intelligent. They are brainy, they can reason. They lack what the Bible called the wisdom of tongues. So the Bible will use the word a fool. Mean that when it comes to the gifts of God, you don't get it right. Different from intelligence, hallelujah. So it is not it is not intelligence or lack thereof that leads a person to reject believing in God. It is the lack of willingness. To be challenged by the righteousness of God. So there are some people, many people do not object to the idea of God as a creator, as long as God the creator minds his own business and leave them alone. What people reject is the idea of God as a creator who demands moral uh, uh, morality from the people. So, so if, if God, if you tell us that you are greater and you leave us alone, don't bother us, don't tell us we are sinners, don't tell us to be right, don't tell us not to sin. We are cool with it. As long as you want to tell us we are sinners and we need to do well and treat and love one another and move away from sin, we don't like it. In other words, when people disbelieve in God, they just reject God in their hearts. But the Bible calls those who will get it right with God wise men, wise women. So may the Lord help all of us. Amen. In fact, I think Psalm 90, I'm sure the verse 12, Moses prayed that help me and give me a heart of wisdom that I may get it right, that I'm, I'm, I may number the things that you have given me. Yes. Live the right life, right kind of life. The wise men visit Jesus Christ and they worship him. And I think on on a, on Friday we looked at this key theme uh, at the baby Jesus. Hallelujah! The baby Jesus. We, and we said that the reason why it was the good news was because any time a child is born. And the expectation is that that child has come to the world to do something that even the parent will not be able to do, or no one else. So when the wise men saw the star, they said, the Father Almighty has brought someone in the world to do something that no one else can do. And of course, they knew from the Old Testament that Christ was sent to save us from our sins. Hallelujah. And we also said that as a parent, when the Lord blesses you with a child, the message is simple, that the child has been given to you to do what you cannot do. The child has come to continue the life that you are living. There are a lot of things you will not be able to do, but that child will do it. So as you look at the child, you put the blessings of God upon him or her. And you pray and say and tell the child that I wish you were. May the Lord bless you to do all that I'm not be able to do. And so the wise men, when they heard about Christ, they went said something to Mary and they worshiped. Savior. 
St. Paul tells us in Ephesians 5, 15 to 17, that do not be unwise, but be wise knowing the will of the Lord. So now let us look at what the wise men did, hallelujah, from where we read the book of Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. So a very powerful message. So let's go to that, the book of Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. So the first two verses tells us that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, or wise men, from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? King of the Jews. Of course, they knew they heard about David. So if someone else has been born from the line of David, he's coming to do something great. And, and, and I didn't want the other. We saw the star when it rose and have come to worship him. So obviously these people were not Jews. They were from the Far East, Iraq, Iran, from that region. And they traveled all the way to Jerusalem following the star. In those days, some people you know, had the grace to read uh, 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 heavenly bodies. And of course, those who are really into spiritual things will tell you everyone has a, has a star, and some people do have brighter and bigger stars than others. So if you have a very bright and good star, a very bad, evil person in your family can go behind the scenes and bring you down. So those who not only really have great stars, big stars, they suffer a lot in life. Mm. Those who suffer a lot in life are those who have bright stars. The reason is simple. Those who go into the spiritual realm, they see your star and then they mock you. They mock you. Now, if you don't draw close, I think I've told the church several that what really helped Joseph was because he has faith in God. Joseph had that kind of life, that messianic life. His star was bright. Even though his own brothers could not stand, they were not comfortable. They wanted to kill him, they wanted to sell him, they wanted to fight him, they wanted to do this to him. What saved him was his relationship with God. I think this is very painful to watch when young men and young women say there is no God. The God who has brought them into this world. The God who has designed something good for them. And they want to live their lives anyhow. Save this world. It's like a football pitch that we play football. Even these days, the Premier League tells us that football is no more football. There is more to football than what we see. The wise men saw the star of Jesus. And they said, let, let, let's go and visit this great man. And I want to encourage you to draw closer to God so that the Lord will keep you safe. Hallelujah. Because when people see your star, if you are lucky, they may love you. If you are not lucky, they may come after you. Those who have good and awesome destinies, they suffer a lot. Let me tell you, church, many of the people you see out there as homeless, yeah, that wasn't their destiny. That wasn't. Many of them were meant to be great. But because they were far away from the Almighty God, they had no divine protection. So in every society, we have good people and bad people. And the bad people made them. He said, we saw his, we saw his star, beautiful star. And, and we have come to worship this great man. They set up to find where Jesus was. 
to worship him. And you must make that effort. Whatever the gospel is preached, you must travel. You must go there and worship. And you must go with love. And when you go, it's not just let me pass by and worship and go. When you go, sit down, visit, and have fellowship, and worship. They travel all the way, Iran, Iran, to Jerusalem. They visited. Worship the Lord. Now verse 2, verse 28 tells us what the unwise Herod, what he did. When Herod heard the news, he secretly started to conspire to plan to kill Jesus. So you see the difference. Like the group of men were happy to visit the Messiah. And someone to the moment he heard about Jesus, I want to kill him. I want to destroy him. And we still have Herod's in the world today. When they hear good news about you, let me go and find out how we can destroy things. Herod was busy. When bad people hear good news, they think of the new. That is why God does not reveal his plans to bad people, but only to his good people. Amen. The Bible says that God stopped speaking to Saul, the president of Israel, when he became disobedient. Saul was not hearing from God anymore. He wasn't hearing from him. So what he did was that he consulted, uh, he consulted, uh, 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 consulted uh, a medium, someone who can sort of speak to spirits being. The book of 1 Samuel 28 tells us that. The verse 5 says that, verse 25, when Saul saw the Philistine and he was afraid, terror filled his heart. He inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him by dreams or urim or prophets. 7. Saul then said to his attendant, find me a woman who is a medium or a witch, so I may go and inquire of her. Have you seen that? What was Saul doing? Saul was chasing David to kill him. But God stopped speaking to Saul. And Herod was searching for Jesus to kill him. And you see, it's the same battle from Genesis 3.15. That the feet of the woman would put the head of the serpent right. And the serpent will strike his heel. Same fight, battle going on. Now, and there's also a battle going on in your life. There's a battle going on in you. Every human being. It's a battle going on. And for Christ, it was Herod who inherited nothing from the evil one to fight and to kill him. So we, so we can go back to our text from verse 3. So he said, when he heard that, that he heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them whether the Messiah was born. In Bethlehem in Judea, he replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come the ruler who will shepherd my people. Seven. Then Herod called the man guy secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and set carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. You see that he was lying? Lying? It's not everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord truly wants to worship the Lord. Verse 3 to 8 tells us what the wicked are. Now let's read from verse 9 to 11. Now it tells us that when the wise men got to where Jesus was, they were overjoyed. You cannot come to Christ and not be happy. 
then you have not come. The world by joy. They got everything right. So the song that we sang, uh, don't worship. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my Lord. That was what they would say. They got everything right. The best way to enjoy Christ is that when you come to Christ, forget about yourself. And let everything be about him. That is true worship. When you come to Christ, it's not about you. It's about him. And I don't know if you've been to the Queen's Palace before, right? Do you pray that she invites some of you on the place? She invites some of you on the When you, when you visit the I mean, it's, it's, it has nothing to do with you, it's about her. So everywhere you see her picture, and then everyone will be watching you and will be telling you, listen to the queen. Now if you try to stand like this, someone will come and just strike you. When you come before a great king, it's about him. So you listen to him, and he blesses you. And when you go home, where you are, you can also be a, a king there. And you also bless people. But when you come to Christ, it's him. So we come to Christ to receive. And then we go out there to bless people with the grace that we have received. But we can never receive it is us in his presence. The Bible says they were of our joy. They were so happy. Psalm 1, 2, 2 verse 1 says, I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Is that nice? I rejoice. When, when someone tells you, let's go to the house of the Lord, that's a great invitation. Go and buy a new dress if you like. I know people don't do now. People only buy a new dress when they are going parties. Party that, that, that there is no anointing there. No anointing there. We, uh, we studied on, on Friday that uh, where Christ was born, the inn, you know, there was no place for him. In the guest house, there was no place. So and nearby there was a ship. That was where Joseph had for Mary. And so it, it would have been very easier for the angels to just go to the guest house where there were great men and women to share the good news. But they went to the open country where there were shepherds. And then they gave them the message that Christ has been born. And, and, and so when you come to Christ, it's the same attitude. And when they tell you, let's go to the house of the Lord to worship, rejoice and be happy. The psalmist said that I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The wise men, they bow down and they worship Christ when they go there. They said, you are the king of Israel. And what that meant was that you are coming to do what none of the kings did. You are coming to be their savior. So we bow. We worship you. And the Bible tells us that then they presented gifts to Jesus. The Mary. They brought all kinds of necessary gifts to Christ. That would, that would, that would be used to take care of Christ. In, in, in the Mary, we have come, but you need all this for this great king. So get all this gift and they take good care of him for us. And so we are also told in scripture that believers don't go into the house of the Lord empty-handed. Hallelujah. Yeah, Deuteronomy 16, 16. We don't go into the house of the Lord empty-handed. Go to the house of the Lord with gifts, with songs, with tithes and offerings and first fruits. 
to the house of God. And these are used to take care of the house of the Lord. Mm. It's the same principle. They are used to take care of God's house, to do painting and good heating and painting. Because, you see, church, that is the source of our blessings. That is where we go to worship our God. So we come and make sure that out of God is run properly. Because that is our source of blessing. If you die after 80 years, this is your church. We will bury you. So we put your coffin somewhere here, right? Then we give the last respect. Then we have the choir leading us, crying a little bit. And we have service. And then we'll bury you. If you want to be taken to your hometown, your village, we will do that. Now we'll follow. Go there. And then the following Sunday, the following month, we'll come and organize Thanksgiving service. And an aspect that really gets me sad. I've only done this once in my whole life as a pastor. And even it was not a church member who died. I think three, four years ago, one of Enyunam's cousins, my wife's cousin's mother died. And then, and then I had to conduct the funeral service. So, so they came to the church for Thanksgiving. We were, we were the union of that before. And the most, you know, that part always gets me. No. It is the time when they bring out the register, right? And you start mentioning names, John Mensa, and you, you stand up, I'm here. Then they'll call Olivia James, then you stand up, I'm here. Then they call Mercy Mensa, then they stand up. Then they call maybe Jonathan David, and no response. And then we sent someone, I remember we sent Jesse to do that. Is it? We sent someone, go out there and shout that if you, you will find Jonathan. Maybe he's late in coming to church. Then you go out there and shout, Jonathan David. Then we will send him again. We will send him the third time, go and look for him. And the third time we will say that, ask any of his relatives about his whereabouts. And then they'll be silent, telling the man that he's no more. So then officially the church will stand up and then we'll finally commit the person's soul to the living God. And then we will take his or her name from the church registrar, is it? Know that he's, or she's no more a member. He has gone or she has gone to be with the Lord forever. So always, this saints, the wise men who get these things right, hallelujah. So they went to Christ. So that verse 11, verse 9 to 11, I think we can read up. So he said, after, after they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen him when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where Jesus was. So you have to search for Jesus. And you must search for him diligently. You cannot be careless and feel expect to find Jesus. It doesn't matter. Hebrews 26. Whoever comes to me must know that, must believe that I exist and that I reward those who diligently seek me. So you, you cannot look for Christ, the Savior, anyhow and still find him. It doesn't work. With prayers, with a cheerful heart. Go and look for Christ. And so they continued. They followed the star. And then the star stopped over the place where Jesus was. Verse 10 says, When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed them and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. And presented him with gifts of gold, 
frankincense, and man. Presented if to the Savior. But Mary use all this, sell some, do whatever I want. Because they came from a far, very far distance. So there was no way they I maybe mean, they brought sheep and cows. So they brought like money, gave something that American convert to help bring Jesus up. And then they presented to the Messiah to take wise people. They get it right when it comes to the things of God. Because Herod was busy. I was looking for Jesus to kill him. So some people can be busy by people. I mean, busy for nothing, is it? But God says, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. That says, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in their dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and then escape to Egypt. Stay there until you, until I tell you, my Herod is going to set for the child to kill him. And of course, by that time, Mary and Joseph had money, right? So they went to Egypt for three and a half years. Stay there until Herod. And we said on, I can't remember last week, that for Christ to grow and to be free to serve humanity and to fulfill the will of the Father. Within three and a half years, God had to kill So that when after Herod died, Mary and Joseph brought Christ back to Jerusalem. You know, some churches will pray that, Lord, let there be fire on the head of my enemies, is it? The fire, fire. No, no, I don't like praying that prayer. No, no, I don't like that prayer. I admit that we don't really pray that prayer. Because sometimes when you do that, you may end up killing a loved one. <laughs> you might end up killing someone you love. You agree? Yes. There is a law sent fire on the head of all my enemies. Let all the other things come out. Before you realize all the people around you, they don't have feet again. And they start running away. So I remember, I don't, I don't pray that prayer. Now I'm like that. But, but sometimes we, I will pray the same prayer in a nice way. So we say, Lord, deal with all those who are trying to bring us down. It's the same prayer, but in the ninth way. When we say that, we are saying that, Lord, we hand everything over to you. Take care of everything for us. We cannot do that. So that we will focus on your work and things you want us to do in this world. So do all the fights for us. So that we can use our little strength to serve you. Yeah, so, so our sermon is quite very simple. That, that the wise men, so the verse 12 tells us that God told the wise men, don't go back to Herod. No, don't go back to Herod again. Just leave him alone. And then, and then when we read, 19 to 20 tells us that at the end, at the wicked, at the end of the wicked is always not good. The end of the wicked is always not good. Herod died so that Christ could live to serve God and to bring salvation to humanity. St. Paul, as we said, in Ephesians 5, 15 to 17, he said, Do not be unwise, but be wise knowing the will of God. And in fact, say, Don't get drunk. Don't be slumber. Be wise. It means that make sure you get the things of God correct. That is true love. And we said that when you do the right thing in the eyes of God, you are honored and respected. And you do well in life. And God gives you the wisdom to believe in Christ Jesus for eternal life. 
But a denial of God or disobedience to God is often accompanied by a wicked lifestyle. So the more you deny God, you don't want to get it right with God, like all the characters we have in the Bible, then a wicked lifestyle will follow. And so let us decide this afternoon to become wise in the eyes of God by making right decisions when it comes to the things of God. Because once, once you get the things of God right, you, your life will be right. That, I mean, that's the bottom line. And Christ tells us in Matthew 22, that is, he said, he, I mean, he told the people, you are in error because you don't know the scriptures. If you don't know the word of God, your life will go wrong. But if you know the word of God, and also decide not to, your life will go wrong. So there are a lot of Christians that have a problem now. They know the word of God. They see the star. And the Lord has touched their heart. Somehow they tell themselves, I don't want to go this way. They go this way and they hurt themselves. And as a pastor, that is very difficult to watch them. You can know. And Christ tells us in Matthew 7, 24, 20 says, the wise ones are the ones who hear the word of God and they'll put them into practice. In their marriage life, in their health, in their opinions, in their social life, at the workplace, in their faith, they practice the word of God. It's life. The three men got everything right. When they heard, when they saw the star, They followed the star. And they went and visited the savior of the world. And they worshipped him. And they left. John 3 tells us about the man called Nicodemus. We know the story. In the middle of the night, he also went to Jesus. And then he, he, he was asking all kinds of questions. Now Lord said to him, Nicodemus, Unless you are born again, not enter the kingdom of God. When we visit the Messiah, and when we fellowship, and when we allow him to speak to us, he tells us a lot. And Nicodemus left that meeting happily. John, who was close to Jesus, recorded that conversation. And then he added it to that book. So it's Easter time, sorry, it's Christmas time. And unto us Christians, it's all about Christ. Let's take this message home. As God's people, let us make sure we get the things of God right. So that in his eyes, it is, it is, it is, it is not about what people think about you, it's about what the Almighty God says about you. In the eyes of the Almighty God, let God see you as a wife, as a wise man, as a wise woman. I mean, uh, there's a someone I'm so preparing, maybe after New Year we share, I've, I've, I've entitled it, Walking in the Consciousness of God. Walking in the Consciousness of God. In, in other words, you are living your life as if God is watching you. And truly God is watching you. To bless, to protect, and to discipline. Psalm 139 will tell us a lot. God is watching over us. So let us be conscious of that. He sees, and as we get his things right, he says, that is a wise man. It's a wise woman. And then he opens more doors for us. Uh, we were supposed to have baptism this afternoon, the service, but our pool, for some reason, I'm sure is still leaking. So we could not get enough water. So we left the pool on since, I think, uh, 7 p.m. Friday up to uh, yesterday, 5.30 in the evening. And then, and then all the water we had was just uh, a tile high. So just like this, something like that. 
all the water we got for more than almost 24 hours. So the conclusion was that there is something wrong with the pool. I think it's, it's, well, it's still leaking. So we will have the baptism today. So the builder will come in after service or tomorrow to fix and then we'll refill. But we'll make sure we do the baptism before 31st. So that those who are going to be baptized will enter 2020. It's fresh born again. People who have come down from heaven. Yeah, hallelujah. Let us pray.